Um, okay, so you you haven't experienced colorism. Um, you haven't necessarily seen it in the group, but do you think it exists in the group, or do you think that some of your castmates, castmates, excuse me, are colorists? Lawyer, CEO, and founder of Hello Africa are just a few ways to describe Neka Ihim. From entrepreneurship to very public conflicts among her cast, Neka is no stranger to telling it like it is. Now, the Real Housewives of Potomac star is stepping into the shade room and she's not holding back a drop of that Bravo tea. What's up, roommates? It's your girl, Tembi, and today we are joined by one of the Real Housewives of Potomac's newest girlies, Miss Neka Ihim, joining us today, stepping into the shade room. Yes, girl. Thank hey, you for having me. Of course. Thank you for joining us. I hope it's not too shady. It's, it's, it's my first time stepping shady. in. It's never shady. It's, it's you know, <laughs> it's never shady. <laughs> like, I can handle it, though. If it's shady, I can still handle it. Right, okay. right. You hold your own. You hold yes. your own, as we saw this season. Okay, we're just going to get right into it. Oh, like, man. I just, you know, we just watched the reunion, just mm -hmm. aired, and you there's think? a lot to unpack. I thought, well, there's a lot to unpack. <laughs> <laughs> Great season. You know, how, how was it for you just, you know, generally coming onto the show, and then I want to get into, like, the reunion and, you know, all, all the things. Yeah, um, I was really excited to join the cast. Yeah. You know, I'm a very people person. I like to socialize, I like to have a good time. I think I told you guys many times in this season, I'm about vibes. Yeah. Vibes, energy, my little champagne glass, you know. Mm -hmm. I have to put the champagne glass down a little bit now because I'm trying to get pregnant. Yeah. But, you know, it was really good. Like, the ladies, I really enjoyed them. Um, most of them were really welcoming. There were some hurdles with the whole fractures. Yes. There were a lot of issues that the ladies had that predated me. So it uh -huh. was really, really hard because they're trying to work through their stuff. And these are things that have happened for several seasons. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just kind of diving in there while they're just, you know, trying to deal with their own issues. But right. despite that, I was able to connect with them. Yeah. Okay. So there is a whole situation about how you got on the show. Right. Yes. Um, and we saw that during the reunion. I don't know why I thought I saw it as well during the season. Like there well, there was a whole I know you, I don't know you <laughs> moment. And then during the reunion, Andy revealed that he wanted you to come on the show as a friend of Wendy's and she declined. So what's your take on the um, you know, I I know her versus I've met her. So like what you know, if I'm like Oh my God, I, you know, if we, if we have this conversation, you know, an interview and I'm like, oh my God, Neka, I, I know her. Like, would you be offended by that if I'm, you know, or would you be like, we don't know each other, but well, we've met. One thing about me is that <clears throat> I really, I try to be very careful about what I say. Okay. Right. Because the wrong word choice can change the whole semantics of a, of a, a sentence or conversation right. or whatever. As we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> As we've seen. It's very important to get it right. So I've never said that I, I know her because I, I don't know her. Okay. But I was introduced to her at a concert. I was introduced to her by my cousin-in-law. Lebe. Lebe. That we've seen. Through. We were at a private concert. Fino was performing. And oddly enough, she, my cousin-in-law walked in. She identified my cousin-in-law and flagged us down. Mm -hmm. And we walked over to her mm -hmm. and my cousin-in-law, again, oddly enough, was like, oh, yeah. this is my cousin's wife, the one I told you about mm -hmm. that's doing Married to Medicine DMV. Okay. So it wasn't just like I saw her there or this. And that. I was I was introduced mm -hmm. and she was very friendly, very nice. Okay. So what do you think the shift was or why do you think she kind of, you know, felt a way about, about you being on the show? I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I've thought about it my own self. You know, maybe she thought that well, what I, what was communicated to me was that I was telling people that she and I are friends mm -hmm. and that's not possible because we're not friends. Mm -hmm. You know, I've met her and had a conversation with her. I thought she was nice. I then saw her again um, at a birthday party right. and I've had a conversation with her, but yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So do you, some people say, well, maybe she wanted to be the only Nigerian on the show. Do you think that that's the case? Because, you know, I think what people were hoping for was like a little dynamic duo oh, Nigerian been, girl that situation, that that right? But that wasn't the case. I would have loved that because yeah. I love my culture. I, I go to Nigeria as often as I can. A lot of my friends are Nigerian. I, I mean, I have friends that are non-Nigerians as well, of course, but I grew up very natively and traditionally Nigerian. 
and you know being in the diaspora i think it's really important to maintain culture maintain relationships so i'm always more drawn to my african people I'm like oh right. there's because we're not there's not many of us right, you know right. so naturally i'm drawn to them i really wish that dynamic could have taken place i think it would have been great for a great representation for our culture mm -hmm. because there's not very many nigerians on this scale of television so it would have been great for the culture but i don't i've tried to understand myself why you know the issues took place and you know all that stuff and I, I don't I don't know I think that um, it's odd that I wasn't really welcomed in and I have to defer to the thoughts of those who do know her mm -hmm. and they've said that she was intimidated and wanted to be the only Nigerian and that's what I'm rolling with yeah yeah okay so so is there a chance we'll see you guys be a dynamic duo situation <laughs> or is there you know not for that because on, on Wendy's and um, you know she's she said to you well, what did I do? Because we saw you try to make amends. Um, you you tried. You guys had the sit down lunch. There wasn't a lot of receptiveness, you know, on on both ends at some point. So you know, I think you initially tried, but then you guys were both like, "Well, forget you." Then you know. Um, so, what, in your opinion, did Wendy do to you? Because she says like. Well, what do I have to apologize? What do I have to move forward for? Like, what did I do to you? In her mind, in her opinion, you've, you've, you know, said things about her. You told people you were friends when you weren't friends. You know, you... I'm glad you said in her mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, but to be fair, she could, you know, also say, well, you called me a bitch. Mm -hmm. You called my mom a witch. And then you said, my husband doesn't look happy in our relationship. I didn't say that. Yeah. I didn't say he didn't look happy. Um... But I think it's also very interesting that um, that question is being asked because that in and of itself is like, okay, so my family did this. What do I, what do I have to do with it? Mm -hmm. So you know your family did this. Mm -hmm. At no point in time have we heard no calls were made. Mm -hmm. At no point in time did, were we told that some of these things were not said. Mm -hmm. There's an admission right there. Yeah. But we have to ask the million dollar question, how do these people know about me? Is Lebe How does the sister know about me? How does the mother know about me? How do they know I'm on the show? But would that not be via Lebe? Lebe didn't even know I was on the show. Oh. Nobody did because oh. I'm an attorney. I'm really into confidentiality, okay. you know, and I have a confidentiality agreement at that time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know I was on the show. Do you know how I found out I was on the show? How? Through the phone calls. Oh. Lebe finally called me after the April 7th call and it was like, I have to tell you what's been going on. Apparently you're on this television show. Had you not been cast? No. Okay. <laughs> it was just a conversation. No one, I did not have no contract. Okay. I was just in the channels of casting. Okay. I was in the channels of casting. I had finished my test shoot mm -hmm. and um, with Ashley and I didn't know. That's how I found out I was on the show. Hmm. Hmm. So, so there had been some type of conversation prior to that. On her end, to her sister. maybe production and, asked her to introduce you, and that's how that probably came about. I, I don't know, but yeah. I understand if she found out, right, because she's mm -hmm. in the circle of the group, right? Right, 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 but right. But how right. would your sister know about me to be making phone calls about me? How would your mother know about me to be making phone calls about me? Mm -hmm. It can only come through you. Yeah, so is that what she did? She Put to the answer that in their question. Back. Okay. She put the, why else? Why else would your? I don't know your sister. Mm -hmm. Would your sister call and say, "Oh, you sat down with them, be and blah blah." blah. She would know that because you told her. Right, right, right. How? What other reason? Mm -hmm. And the things that were said to my in-law were things that she mm -hmm. communicated to her family. And when you have a tight family like that, yeah. you are communicating information. You are saying things. You're expressing yourself. Mm -hmm. So they know about me, and they made those gestures towards me because the information came from her. Mm -hmm. And so it seems as though maybe there was something where it seems that maybe people felt a way about you being on the show and that's how all of this transpired? I believe she felt a way about me being on the okay. show because she was upset. She was upset. She believed that I used her name and said that we were friends. Mm -hmm. And again, I've had a conversation with her um, at a concert and I mm -hmm. saw her at a birthday party. That doesn't qualify as a friendship. Do you think it would have had a different outcome if maybe the conversation wasn't you know, oh, you're using my name to be friends, but that never happened. And, you know, maybe Bravo was just like, oh, can you introduce, you know, NECA as, you know, this friend? And without the, without the aspect of 
oh, I know her, I don't know her. If there was just a call made, do you think she would have done the cosign? Um, I don't know because I don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. But I don't think that even matters because after hearing the stuff I heard at the reunion about, mm -hmm. you know, them requesting that she bring me on and then declining, I started asking questions. I'm like, is this normal? Do people normally decline when the network says, hey, can you bring this person in? Mm -hmm. I asked around. Mm -hmm. I asked the people who would know. And no, she's the first person that declined to bring somebody on. Hmm. on a show that's been going on for eight years. Hmm. Is that not weird? Yeah. Well, you know, it, she said she didn't know you. So, I mean, I don't know. That's fine. Yeah. Would you... Does everybody know everybody? No, but if the roles were reversed, just to be objective, would you um, co-sign for someone that you didn't know at your job? A hundred percent. I have Nigerians email me all the time. Hey, I see you work for this company or you're affiliated with this company. Can you pass my resume along? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm going to do because you're my sister, you're my brother. I'm going to vouch for you too mm -hmm. because you're my people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what, what do you do you need from um, Wendy to move forward? I'm good. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm good. <clears throat> I think there was a lot that happened. Um, I've apologized. And I'm, I'm really, I live in a space of grace Yeah. and I'm, I'm looking forward to moving forward. Yeah. Okay. I do, I do, I did mean to ask you, okay, during the reunion, we did see, um, when Andy asked or someone asked what Osu meant and, you know, she kind of stopped you from answering that question for the viewers who are unaware. I'm African. So I know, you know, certain things about taboo and things of sort, but for the viewers that don't understand, I don't know what Osu means. I'm not Nigerian, but can you give us like some kind of context to under so we can see what the impact of all of this d was during the season? Yeah, so what I was going to say, I wasn't going to answer what it is. I was going to say what I eventually did say to mm -hmm. Andy was that none of us here are competent to really properly and thoroughly address that issue. Okay. Um, we, just, we just aren't. It's something that's happened very ancient in our culture, and it is taboo. We don't talk about it. We don't go into detail about it. It's not spoken of, and it just refers to an abolished caste system. Okay. And that was a very hurtful time period for people and we just don't touch on it. Mm -hmm. So that was like hurtful for the, okay. Where is the accountability accountability for Ashley in all of this? Like there seems like there hasn't been anyone, you know, kind of asking her these questions, you know, I feel like there's been a lot of escalation between you and Wendy, but there's been no type of conversation or accountability on Ashley's end who kind of started, you know, this whole, she started the aspect the of the friction. article. She started the aspect yeah. of the article, certainly. <clears throat> and that has been incredibly damaging and consequential to me mm -hmm. because a lot of people didn't know what to believe. They yeah. just heard this article. They heard this Osu thing. Mm -hmm. And I have been really dragged all over social media about it. Mm -hmm. I've been attacked. I've received the most egregious messages mm -hmm. over something that I actually had nothing to do with. Right, right, Nothing right. to do with. And, you know, Ashley and I've had a conversation and she has apologized tremendously on camera and off camera. And it was addressed at the reunion. You guys didn't get to see that piece. Okay. Um, but I do think she apologized. I think she said that she was sorry and didn't understand the sensitivity of it. Mm -hmm. um, it was a horrible thing that happened. It was a really horrible thing that happened, and I am the only one that suffered the consequences. I'm the only one. Mm. Because even after it became crystal clear that I actually really didn't say anything. Right. Nothing more than what I said here. It's an abolished caste system, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. People still wanted to believe that I fed that information to Ashley. Mm. That I taught her that, and I told her to do this. I mean, we saw it again at the reunion. Ashley took responsibility for bringing it to the group. I yeah. had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. Nothing. But that did play a part into, you know, kind of pushing you and Wendy apart even more. Like, I'm sure there was some kind of crack in there, but it did play a part into kind of like continuing continuing that and there's no, there doesn't well, seem I don't, to be. I don't know. Okay. Right? And I say I don't know <clears throat> because as we saw during the season, Ashley very quickly told her it was wrong. It was untrue. Okay. Do you agree? Like, yeah. I think like the next episode. Right. At the, at her child's communion. Mm -hmm. Ashley was like, oh, by the way, I lied. You know, <laughs> I misremembered, lied about something yeah. very huge. Don't mm -hmm. be offended. The damage had been done though. Already well, no, because it. I hadn't seen her since. Okay. I hadn't, I hadn't seen her since. So I saw her at Ashley's housewarming. And then, um, the next time I saw her was pickleball. But before pickleball, mm -hmm. Ashley had come <clears> clean. <throat> um, but I mean, either way, it's not a positive thing you want to hear. Yeah. So I think she probably had some emotions when she first heard it. Mm -hmm. um, 
but Ashley cleared it up relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to, um, is, is Lebe your cousin? Or your, husband's your husband? Cousin. Okay, so when it comes to Lebe, you, um, when you asked Wendy, who announces someone as a person they want their daughter to emulate if that's not your friend? She accused you of doing crack. Do you do crack? Never a day <laughs> okay. in my life, my darling. <laughs> Never a day in my right. life. Right, okay. I, I just, I love my bubbles. Mm -hmm. You'll catch me with a little martini too. Right. But that's that's where it stops. That's where it stops. <laughs> that's where it stops. Okay, and then lastly on this, um, Mia, at the reunion, Mia asked if you guys would ever be friends. And, you know, we did see Wendy's response. She said she's, you know, cordial and fine to move on, but we didn't get to see what your response to that is. So is there a space where, you know, you think you guys will ever be friends? You know, I am hopeful. Mm -hmm. I am hopeful. I think um, hopefully we can have some conversations um, off camera. But, you know, I think this situation became incredibly messy. And um, like I said, I live in a space of grace where I give grace to other people and I receive mm -hmm. grace as well. So I'm, I'm hopeful that at some point we can move forward. And people Realistically, do you think there's a chance of, for her? She feels like you call my mama witch, you know. Like, is there, is, is realistically, how do you think you guys can come back from that? I'm, I, like I said, I can only speak for myself, Yeah. you know, and I've seen very egregious things mm -hmm. from other people on this cast in terms yeah. of their relationships and everyone has come in with an open heart and mm -hmm. an opportunity and a path forward. Um, so I've also taken ownership and I've apologized for, you, you know, have. my role and things. And again, like I said, I'm hopeful. Mm -hmm. So recently, actually, we saw um, in, in the last couple of days, um, Wendy's house got robbed and people online are blaming you. Oh. You know, their, you know, their social media users are blaming you for saying, you know, you had bots that leaked her address in like a post. Do you, would you like to address that? First, I mean, I feel really bad that she's going through that. Mm -hmm. I mean, your house is like your safe haven. That's your sanctuary and she has three young kids and yeah. that's the place of security for them. So I feel really bad that, that she's going through that and I hope that, you know, that they can get back in the swing of things and they aren't too shaken up mm -hmm. and that they take whatever actions they need to, you know, secure their house, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's an alarm, so I don't know what they have, but I just, I hope that they're okay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have anything to do with any of that. Yeah. Like, I'm just actually disgusted that anyone would even say that, mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm, that I, I, orchestrated the burglary of her home. Yeah. I would never do that to a single soul. And it's not, what am I burglaring as my home for? Like, I just, I, just, I can't yeah. even think of a response because it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's disgusting. But the internet has been saying very disgusting things, very vile things. Mm -hmm. And to say that I'm orchestrating a burglary and I have bots and I have this, like, I actually didn't even know these bots existed until I entered this housewife's space. Mm. So um, social media, you know, in the space of, you know, social media, mental health, being a new housewife, you know, you kind of go from a space of peace, you know, where people aren't in your life, in your business, you know, you're kind of in your own little bubble, you know, the people that know you know you. And then now, you know, you're on this platform where people can kind of just say anything about you, like whatever they want that you rob someone's house that you did this and you, da, 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 you know so how has that affected you um it's a nightmare <clears throat> it is a nightmare and i think the most disturbing part of it is that people think they know what they're talking about yeah people will talk as a matter of fact like very conclusory mm -hmm. as if they know something as if they've been told something as if they talk to me as if they talk to my husband like they say things as if they know and i just don't know where people get the energy for such negativity mm -hmm. you know i don't really dwell in a space of negativity i'm a very positive person yeah. i realize that negative things happen yeah but you got to turn that around real quick you know what mm -hmm. i mean so for people to be online dwelling in negativity chasing negativity finding negativity looking for ways to bring people down i've never experienced it at this level in my life and it is incredibly hard mm -hmm. you know when i first um we first started airing the girls would be like stay offline get offline don't read twitter don't get on instagram and so that's actually the method i've been following like i mm -hmm. haven't been online like that um i haven't really been on twitter until recently i started mm -hmm. getting online because I want to also interact with the people who have supported me. Yeah. You know, it was really, really hard in the beginning with the article and the negativity and whatnot. But then people who really wanted to see me and mm -hmm. look past that to mm -hmm. see the small glimpses of me that they did show, it wasn't yeah. much, 
but the small glimpses of me that they did show, people understood me a little bit and were sending really nice messages. Mm. And so I wanted to be responsive so people started getting online. And that's when I saw like the majority of the hate and the nasty comments. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think I understand why people feel like they have the right to try to destroy people. Yeah. Especially in, an, in a day and age where mental health is a huge issue and related to gun violence and related to all types of traumas. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be uplifting and empowering yeah. people, not trying to intentionally bring them mm -hmm. down. So it's, it's really, Sad. Yeah. So what what is it um, that production didn't show about your life, you know, because it kind of just played out this one storyline where it was like you and Wendy and, you know, all of that. And, you know, even your husband's actually. So do do your husband and Eddie know each other? Yes or no? They went to the University of Maryland College okay. Park together. And they were a part of this. I'm not sure if you had like an African Student Association at mm -hmm. your I was university. vice president. So then you probably <laughs> had a relationship with people that were part yeah. of the organization. You guys would do things together, restaurant, bowling, fashion shows, mm -hmm. those things. So that was them. Mm -hmm. They were in ASA together. Okay. And um, as well as my husband's brother. He okay. has a brother that's a year older. And it's so funny because my husband and his brother, they're a year apart, like I said, they're like attached at the hip. Mm -hmm. I've never seen my husband and Eddie together because yeah. my husband doesn't really go out a lot. He travels, he's focused on businesses and all that stuff. But um, I was out with my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. It's the same night of the concert and Eddie approaches my brother-in-law mm -hmm. to greet him. How are you doing? What's up, yeah. man? Long time. Because they were all together in that African Student Association group mm. together. So at what point did the unfollow happen? Do you know? Like, do you know what the timeline for that was? Was it prior to you coming on the show or was it after? Yeah, um, it was, I don't have my phone. It was after the phone calls. Okay. Mm -hmm. After the phone calls. And, and do you think that was a ploy in terms of, I don't know you like Mariah Carey, right? And we're going to stick with this thing that I don't know you. So as my husband, you cannot be on Facebook being friends with her husband because I don't know her. Do you think that that was a ploy as far as the unfollow goes and you're, you know, Eddie telling her husband, well, I don't know you. <laughs> Like, well, why don't y'all know each we other? We need people <laughs> like you on the internet because I don't have to explain anything to you. You figured it out. Mm. There you have it. Okay. There you have it. We'll, we'll leave that there. There you have it. <laughs> we will but, leave I mean, that there. As a husband, you got to follow what your wife is talking about. Right. You know, you, y'all a unit. You got to move together. Right. You got, you got to, you know, stand by your wife and, and, and protect your wife, you know, and all of that stuff. And speaking of that, you, you did make a comment to your, your husband, um, backstage at the reunion that v viewers are talking about. They're like, why, why is she talking to her man like that? And then you, you know, did the, the Juan Dixon, um, dig, which, which was a, a good one. Um, <sighs> so would you like to, you know, how, how do you and your husband typically communicate? Cause people are kind of like, well, I think if we saw more of my real life, you would see that, Ooh. you know, as you mentioned, um, as you mentioned, you said you saw a lot of the Wendy storyline. That was never my storyline. Right. Like nobody knew, I mean, as Andy said, like mm -hmm. they didn't know about it. Um, at the time of casting, I didn't even know about it at the time of casting. Mm. I only found out about it one week before um, Ashley's housewarming. Mm. So I didn't tell them because I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then I, when I found out about it, I didn't know what to do. I was terrified, if I'm going to tell you the truth. I was mm. terrified, and I literally was like, God, I actually don't even need to do this. Like, what am I joining this group for? Mm -hmm. Like, what am I doing here if this is what's happening to me already? Yeah. And then I was like, I'm not going to allow these type of things to keep me from what God has presented for me. Right. And so I decided to just do it. I was going to ignore it. I was going to just move on, you know, and then it was just so uncomfortable for me mm -hmm. at Ashley's housewarming that I, I afterwards immediately is when I called and was like, Hey guys, by the way, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how that came out, but it was never my storyline. It was right. never part of the, the mm -hmm. audience getting to know me. I had so many other things that I was bringing to the table. Yeah, so tell us about, like, what didn't we get to see about, you know, NECA, your life, your your husband, what, you know, what, how you guys actually communicate maybe versus that clip. Yeah, so, you know, we're a young couple. We're newly married, so, and I'm, I am, you know, I, I can be quick with it. I'm short-tempered a little bit. <laughs> but I think that you guys caught us, or me, right, in a lot of emotional moments mm -hmm. hot tempered emotional moments and i love my husband right right and, and he loves me otherwise this wouldn't be the ring on my yeah. finger right it'd be one of those <laughs> microscopic rings where you're like oh is she really married <laughs> you know like we wouldn't know yeah um 
and we have a really great relationship. Do we have moments, mm -hmm. questionable moments? We do, you know, and we're going to probably continuously as we grow in our relationship. I know that's right. Okay, <laughs> so when it, which husband do you think is the most supportive, not including your own mm -hmm. on the franchise? Like, which husband do you think is like will, most supportive, will stand by his lady? Uh, um, let me think. I think Ray Ray. He supports Ray. Karen. Yeah, he does. He deals with all her little crazy antics. We love him some Karen. <laughs> um, Gordon, too. Gordon, we saw that on the Gordon reunion. Gordon, too. Yep. We got to give it to G. Yep. G is a good guy. He's very intelligent. Mm -hmm. And I'm really proud of him and Mia for how they're keeping their family together and yeah. creating this unit for themselves um, and not letting their personal relationship impact how they um, deal with their kids right. and how they right. can take care of each other still yeah. going forward. Um, but definitely G, definitely Ray Ray. Um, I don't personally know Eddie and Wendy, but mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sure that they're, they support each other really well. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice of you to mention. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I think they support each other well. Um, I think, are those the only husbands? Yeah. Oh wait, Chris and Candace. Oh, Chris and Candace. You know, I only met Chris yeah. when we finished filming, so I don't oh. even know anything about Chris. Okay, okay. Yeah. But Candace, she talks highly for her man. Yeah. She love her man. She love her some Chris. <laughs> she, okay, what, what are your thoughts on Juan Dixon? I like Juan as, like, as a person. I okay. really do like him. When I first met him um, at Pickleball, I really appreciated him welcoming in my husband as a new husband. Mm. We were getting out the car, and he saw my husband, and he just, you know, he really greeted him. Yeah. And coming into this group that's really well established, mm -hmm. it can be strange, right? So I really appreciate him welcoming in my husband. I'll never forget that. Yeah. Did, did did he or Robin say anything about the comment to to you at all? Like you could go there, you know, with uh, Juan or something like that. No, no, they did not. No. Uh, I've talked to Robin since. Okay, you know, and it wasn't really about Juan, right? Mm -hmm. In that moment, I needed a different level of support, mm -hmm. and so I was basically just saying like, I need this support. If not, then you're you don't really you're not valuable in this space for me at the moment for support. Got it. Okay. Well, there's you know uh, something I definitely want to make sure we talk about, which is the whole conversation about colorism mm -hmm. um, within this group specifically. Have you experienced colorism in the group or witnessed it at all? You know, when I came in, I had heard about all the colorism stuff, so I <clears throat> came in with my eyes open, mm -hmm. like I was ready, like we're let somebody try me, yeah. you know, like I was ready for it. <laughs> right. Um, but you know, I haven't personally experienced it. Right. And it doesn't mean that it hasn't happened mm -hmm. to anyone else than anyone else claiming that they have had this experience or someone did yeah. this or someone did that. That doesn't discount or discredit what they claim for themselves. Me personally, I haven't experienced it with the ladies. Um, and again, doesn't mean I won't going forward, but as of right now, I don't really have anything to say. Mm -hmm. Um, besides I feel like I've, I've experienced an adverse effect to the colorism issues. Okay, what do you mean by that? And I feel like, you know, we talked about the article in the OSU and like the world hating me mm -hmm. off the bat because of that. I think my association with the light skin people mm -hmm. <clears throat> and people disliking them because of their colorism, they've disliked me as a dark skinned black person for associating with them mm -hmm. by virtue of their skin color. So I've just been kind of like an incidental to this mm -hmm. whole thing because of skin color. And mm -hmm. I've gotten such heinous comments like Uncle Tom, that I'm their pet monkey, all types of things just because I'm friendly with these women. Mm -hmm. And I'm, no one ever asked me, why am I friendly with these women, right? Mm -hmm. Because okay, so why are you friendly with the women? Because <laughs> they've treated me with respect and kindness and they're fun people. Okay. And I treat them with respect, kindness, and I'm fun too, mm -hmm. right? So it's actually really not that deep. Anybody who shows me respect, I'm gonna show you respect right back, mm -hmm. you know? And like, I'm still cool with Candace. Mm -hmm. You know, no one has ever gotten online but like, oh, Candace this, stop talking to Candace, stop this, stop that, you're her pet monkey. They haven't, but they've said these things about the other ladies, mm -hmm. you know, instead of like coming to me with like, hey, I know you're new, I'm kind of concerned, I've seen these types of actions from these women, I don't want it to be you, could you please just be cautious if you're going to be friends with them? No, they jump the gun and start insulting me, calling me names, calling me Uncle Tom, all types of things, and it's just, 
overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It's all really hurtful. And I just don't know how we can resolve this thing when like we're trying to deal with the phenomenon of colorism, but then there's like the aftermath of it that I'm experiencing because of the overarching issue of colorism. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you, you haven't experienced colorism. Um, you haven't necessarily seen it in the group, but do you think it exists in the group or do you think that some of your castmates castmates excuse me are colorists from season eight that i was a part of mm -hmm. i didn't see any colorist behavior okay i didn't see it did you watch the show before you you got on the show not really so okay. what i did do though i tried to after we wrapped i started watching a little bit and mm -hmm. i don't think i completed it okay so, so i was familiar with it but mm -hmm. I, not really so from what you do know is there any part of that where you can be like colorist not colorist where you can make a judgment or would you see I don't have the facts okay. right so but I understand the idea of people saying that the same action done mm -hmm. by a light-skinned person versus a dark-skinned person resulted in two different results mm -hmm. that to me I can see that to be colorist mm -hmm. but I haven't seen it you know and I haven't I haven't seen the examples I haven't seen it but if I saw it I would definitely call it out mm -hmm. you know I'm really for people and I'm for people to being treated equally I wouldn't want anyone to be mistreated because their skin color or exceptions mm -hmm. made for someone because yeah. their skin color because outside of this group we're all experiencing colorism in real life mm -hmm. so the group is not an exception mm -hmm. to justice being served yeah so the streets are saying that the girls are gonna turn on you the way you know they turned on Wendy and Candace, what do you think about that? Um, that they're using you to push them out and then eventually they're going to turn on you and then you're going to be, it's going to be an I told you so or I should have listened moment is what the streets are saying. Listen, I am an honest person. Mm -hmm. If anything happens, I will get on Twitter or Instagram and be like, hey, y'all told me. Yeah. I wasn't listening. My bad, people. So I, would, yeah. I would do that. I don't know because I can't predict the future and I'm not them. Right. But right now, they cool people. So we mm -hmm. have a good time together and I trust them as friends. So if there's hiccups in our friendships mm -hmm. that are regular hiccups, then we'll keep moving. Mm -hmm. But if there's intentional things, then we don't have to reevaluate. Do you think the group has the range to discuss colorism? That was a, a comment that was made um, during, the, during the reunion as far as, you know, I don't think this group has the range to discuss that topic, you know, was a comment that was made. Would you agree? Um, I don't know. Okay. I don't know because I haven't had those type of conversations with the ladies, so I don't know what their, their mental abilities are. Um, I do know for a fact some of them can, mm -hmm. right, because they're used to having these conversations on the regular. Um, Who are I, the ones you think that can? I know for sure. I think obviously Wendy can. Mm -hmm. I know Candace can. I do believe Karen can. Mm -hmm. um, and Karen can probably do it in a different way because she, she's older than us and she's experienced it at different levels mm -hmm. in her life and in different settings. Um, I think Robin can for sure because she's experienced a lot of colorism in her life. Mm -hmm. And she's you know talked about it during filming where a lot of people hated her because she was light skinned, right? Mm -hmm. And you know mistreated her to where she actually didn't want to have light skinned kids. Like she used to pray that she would have dark skinned children mm -hmm. because of the way that she was treated. So I know that she can talk about it. Yeah. Um, Giselle, I think I haven't had those conversations with Ashley, so I don't know what her range is, mm -hmm. but Ashley's also somebody who will sit down and learn and listen. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair. Are you returning next season? I think that you are, I saw a, a what do you call it? A, a poster <laughs> where, where, where it says you're, you're returning. Has a that poster. been confirmed? I think you know now is the time that they kind of get all these things together and yeah. I think announcements will be made and decisions will be made soon. Do you know if you're returning? We don't know these things. Isn't that crazy? Are you sure? What do you mean am I sure? Like, is, or is that like the political thing to say until there's like an announcement? You know, I think everyone in the Housewives world knows that like after the reunion is when deliberations and stuff Yeah, start. so we, we've heard or at least it's been said that Candace isn't returning and Robin isn't returning. Can you uh, speak to that? I know that Candace doesn't want to come back and yeah. she's made the decision to pursue other things in her life and, mm -hmm. um, you know, her music. Um, she's an actress as well. And yeah. I know she has six embryos in the freezer, so mm -hmm. she might want to pop them things in too. <laughs> so, you know, she's taking a quick break. And so that's an announcement that she made. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay we saw you guys at Gag City with Nicki it Minaj. Was amazing. And we saw you, Robin, Giselle, 
Am I making up seeing Sharice? Shasha was there. Okay, Sharice was Shasha's there. Shasha's always down for a good time. She's not going to miss a good time, And there though. was another lady. Ashley. No, no, not Ashley. Well, Ashley was there, but then there was another lady. Jules. That's one of Ashley's friends. Okay, so is this what the cast is looking like? Like, or was this a girls' night situation? Well, Jules was... Mia was supposed to have come with us. Okay. But Mia was recovering, so Ashley brought her friend Jules, who I, I do know and love. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if this is what the cast is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Were you guys filming? No. For that? No? Because we, we wanted to have a good time. Oh, so how did that come about? Was it just a, hey, we're going to the Nikki we show? We talk. Okay. Like, we, we have a group chat. We talk, and yeah. we spend time with each other. We mm -hmm. do things. We communicate. So, Nikki's in town. Who's who's down? Yeah. We all wanted to go, so we went. Was that your first time meeting Nikki? It was. Yeah. And I just have to give a shout-out to Nikki. Mm -hmm. She's a very sweet woman. Yeah. She is a very sweet woman, and she has great advice, and mm -hmm. she's a girl's girl, and she's she put on a great show, first mm -hmm. of all. Yeah. She was giving looks. She was giving body. The vocals were there. Okay. The raps. She was spitting. I had a good time with yeah. Nikki. What advice did she give you? About my fertility. Okay. She gave me advice about my fertility, and she was like, don't stress. I'm like, Nikki. <laughs> Nikki, I'm a stress. Of course I'm stressing. Nikki, yeah. I'm stressing right now. I'm talking to you, girl. <laughs> no, but she gave me good advice. She's like, it will happen naturally yeah. at the right time. Mm. Because you may want it now, and you might be impatient, but it may not be the right time for you. Mm. You have to wait for the right time, and it will happen. That's a word. But it's always good to have a reminder that you need to have peace yeah you need to calm yourself down you need to relax and you mm -hmm. need to wait for the right time are you a barb i am barb are you a barb what's your favorite Nicki minaj song mm, her old school stuff her old school stuff. it's actually really funny because when we we're waiting for Nicki to change i was so annoying i was singing bottoms up mm -hmm. <laughs> so i was like wait i was what was the part i was singing i was like yo trey do you think you can buy me a bottle of rosé <laughs> And I was like, turn to Giselle and be like, I'm with the bad bitch, she's with her friends. <laughs> yeah. I think kids to the bins. <laughs> like, shut up. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so as far as you, in the event that you do return, um, well, what first part of this is what what value do you feel like you brought to the show this season? And what would you like to bring to the show next season? I mean, I feel like it just needs to be a redo because y'all didn't get to see nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Like, we just going to start like I'm just coming back onto the set. Yeah. We're going to just redo season eight is what like, we need to do. Like, reintroduce me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, but like, there's a reason why all the girls like me. Yeah. There's a reason okay. why Karen's on interviews saying I'm a good person. Mm. There's a reason why, you know, Candace is on the phone telling me, do this, do that. You, you don't need to be worried about the um, egg retrieval. You're good. You're mm -hmm. this, you know, there's a reason why I'm cool with everybody yeah. because I am a good person. Yeah. I'm fun. I'm smart. Mm -hmm. I am multifaceted. Mm -hmm. I am a career woman. I'm a soon to be mother. Mm -hmm. I am a business owner. Okay. I'm opening another business okay. and I'm a young wife and I'm building a home and an empire in Potomac, Maryland in Potomac okay. proper. Don't let Karen tell you otherwise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't let her do it. Are you going to, are you going to give back the grand dame title? You, you kind of got to give it back. You know no. what? I don't want no beef with Karen because she's making up new locations now right. to get back at me. So she can have it. But let me ask Giselle because Giselle created the title. Right. I'll call Giselle and say, Jizzy, baby, I don't want no problems with Karen. Can I give her the purple crown, please? Can I give it to her? And, you know, so, yeah, we would love to see more of you. You know, we want to see your life. We want to see more about your businesses. Like, I don't even know. Like, what are your businesses? Tell me about your business. We want to see you at, you know, at the law office or, you know, I don't know, winning a case or, like, arguing in court. Something. We want to see I know. that. We want to see that. I know. I've been, a, I've been a lawyer for, oh, my goodness. I've been a practicing lawyer for 11 years now, going on 12. 12 wow. years. I'm on the 12th year now. What kind of law? Employment law. Okay. I started in employment litigation here in California. Oh, wow. So I moved to Los Angeles one week after I graduated law school. Wow. I grew up in the Midwest in Wisconsin, and I always knew that I wanted to be like in LA. Like that mm -hmm. was just the vibes I was giving. Yeah. So one week after being sworn in by the Supreme Court of Wisconsin, I took my Wisconsin law license, hopped on that United Airlines flight, and I just was like, oh, LA baby, yes. I am here, honey. <laughs> and I just started working. Yeah. I got a job. I was doing employment law, um, employment litigation. So it's, what is that exactly? Employment law is like discrimination, wrongful okay. terminations. So I was on the plaintiff side. Okay. So for instance, if you're working for a company, mm -hmm. um, there are specific labor laws that they have to follow. Yeah. So that's where I started my whole life really mm -hmm. in LA, you know? So what made you move to Potomac? My husband. Okay. 
My husband and his family moved from Nigeria to Maryland when he was 14. Okay. So he's only ever really lived in the DMV area. So okay. when we started dating and getting serious, I knew that I would have to relocate because he has his siblings there, mm -hmm. he has his aunts there, all of his family is there, and I moved to LA on my own. So that's really when life began for me. And I moved okay. to LA, making my own way, building a path for myself. Um, but as I was mentioning, when we got married or getting serious, I knew I'd have to move to the East Coast, and that's that's what happened. So Potomac or LA, if you had to choose? <sighs> you know what? We're already trying to look for a place in LA, yeah. like a little vacation spot, because uh -huh. I'm just so attached to LA. Mm -hmm. It was a huge space in my life. Like, I feel like I really became myself because of my experiences for LA. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I lived here for 10 <clears throat> years. Yeah. And like a really formative and important time period of my life. I was I was 24 mm -hmm. when I moved here. I was just starting my, my legal career and becoming an independent woman and just really developed me. Yeah. Well, maybe we should see you on, on Beverly Hills Housewives. That could be cute. You know, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I would talk to my husband. He loves Maryland. <laughs> so I'd be like, baby, we got to move to yeah. move back to LA. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see. Perfect Potomac cast. What does that look like in your opinion? Ooh. You know, I do like the group as individuals right now. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think if we were able to find a common ground and certain people were able to make certain apologies and move forward, I think everyone is there for a reason and they mm -hmm. bring something to the table. Um, but I definitely think Sharice is good. Yeah. Sharice is really great because she brings that old money in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And she really is Potomac. Yeah. She really, really is Potomac. She has the right network. She got the right net worth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. <laughs> Can't be on Potomac if you broke. Right. <laughs> Sharice got those things. Right. And people don't know this, but Sharice is funny. Mm -hmm. Sharice is a very, very funny person. Like, mm -hmm. the girl is a clown. Yeah. I really enjoy her. And she gets along with everyone in the group. Like, okay. Except way Karen. Better. Yep. I don't. I to this day I still don't know what happened with Karen and Sharice. Yeah. But I don't need to I, unravel that. That can stay far away from me and mm -hmm. somewhere somewhere else because they still are able to be in the same space together. Right. Without any issues. And right. Karen always you know politely declines if she's <laughs> invited somewhere and Sharice uh -huh. politely invites. Right. Right. Right, right. Right. But um yeah Sharice is Sharice is a good TV. Sharice. Okay. If you could get rid. Oh lord. Of one cast mate, mm -hmm. who would it be? One current cast mate? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I don't... From this Well, Candace season. decided to leave, so I will support her leaving. Okay. Because I don't want to... That's switch. such a safe, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I support ah! Candace wanting yes. to further her music career. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, at, at the party, at the after party for GNA, um, there was a fight, a little bit of a tussle. And um, during their, their reunion that we just watched, Giselle, you know said that in her opinion that everyone was responsible for the fight and everyone being Candace, Wendy, Deborah, and Kay. And then she eventually took it back about Wendy. What's your take on that? And do you think that, because people are saying that's an example of her being colorist. Uh, you know, that fight was a nightmare. Yeah. And I'm really sad for Ashley and Giselle because that was their event mm -hmm. and they were trying to showcase their brand right and they worked really hard to put it together mm -hmm. um you know i'm sad that it had to happen because somebody really got hurt mm -hmm. you know Kay really got hurt she was in the ambulance i don't know if deborah got hurt or not but i regret that she was hurt but ultimately speaking deborah had no business yeah going to approach someone whom she knows does not like her and whom she brought up allegations about her husband mm -hmm. a year prior so i blame Deborah for doing that. You had mm -hmm. no business doing that. Yeah. You know, um, and things escalated. My only question or comment or concern when it comes to Candace is Candace is 100% permitted to say what she wants to say, right? Mm -hmm. First Amendment. Mm -hmm. She can free to free speech. There's the lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not absolute, but <laughs> right, right. First Amendment. But is there a moment where we could have diffused it? Is there? That's, you know, that was my question to Candace. Mm -hmm. Do you think that some of your comments exacerbated the situation? Because the girl was wrong. Mm -hmm. She had no business going over there. Yeah. But when we see a crazy person acting crazy, is there <clears throat> a moment where we can try to diffuse it? Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if that point was missed. Yeah. And I don't know if, if Candace received it, probably because she was too busy trying to be like, what the hell? Somebody's blaming me for something. Yeah. 
Um, but that's what I think we have to sometimes focus on, not who's at fault, but how can we try to avoid these mm -hmm. situations because people do end up being hurt. And I think Candace uses her words well. She, can, she should continue to fight with her words and not choose violence. But we also have to try our best to diffuse situations mm -hmm. where we can. Mm -hmm. And clearly, Deborah, I'm trying to not say Sesame Street. <laughs> clearly, Deborah, can we cut that out? <laughs> okay, clearly, Deborah um, was looking for something. Yeah. You know, for her to come to Mia mm -hmm. and confront Mia, and Mia was smart enough to mm -hmm. be like, okay, this girl's on one. Mm -hmm. No, girl, you a 10. You the yeah. baddest 10 I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Diffused. So I, 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 so I, I definitely, you know, get that and, and the point of view people were explaining to Candace, you know, especially the Mia example is, is a good, is a great example, but it seems as though what she was looking for in that moment were, um, was for people to acknowledge that this girl came at me with violence, but everyone is telling me I'm the problem because I talked back. Well, to be clear. I've maintained that Deborah is the issue, and I said right. that in my confessional mm -hmm. in episode 18, I think. Mm -hmm. Right? So, Deborah, sit down. Stay mm -hmm. where you at. Don't be in someone's space when yeah. you know they don't mess with you. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Yeah. So, I think Deborah had no business going over there. So, you are the antagonist. Right. If Candace had gotten up and gone over there, I'd be like, Candy Girl, you know you don't like this girl. What are mm -hmm. you doing over there? But she didn't. But when we saw the girl acting crazy, is there a moment where we could have tried to be like, go back? Right. You know? Right. Um, but I always appreciate Candace using her words, not trying to physically assault. And she uses them well, honey. She does. <laughs> she does. But if someone comes at you with a knife, yeah. we're not going to sit there and continue to push them and encourage them to use their knife. Mm -hmm. We're going to be like, oh, no, um, okay. Mm -hmm. And then when they leave, you're like, wow, you see that? Mm -hmm. And right. that's just all I want for her is to just you know, try to find moments where we can try to be the bigger person. Because it's not about who's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's how can we move forward and squash it. Right. Tell me more about like your businesses. Like I want to hear like what like your actual businesses are. We so we know you're a lawyer and you have multiple businesses and you know you're in um, employment law. Mm -hmm. But so what are your like businesses outside of that? Yeah, or in so, addition to. So I have two children in the forms of businesses and companies. Okay, I was about to say <laughs> when did that happen? I thought we were trying to get pregnant. I'm yeah, pregnant right now with twins. No. Um, my two kids, Hello Africa. Yeah. And that's a very special business for me because okay. I started it when I was in LA. Okay. And I was motivated by my move to Los Angeles to create it. And basically, Hello Africa is an African um, social networking app okay. to connect Africans in the diaspora. You know, oh. when I moved here from LA, I didn't know anybody. Yeah. Like, I literally was just like, I'm moving to LA and I was mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. And me being a Nigerian and growing up natively Nigerian, I feel safe and comfortable in my community. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, hey, where can I find some, where can I meet people? Where can I find friends? Where can I find events? How can I get in the mix? Mm -hmm. How can I find my people? Mm -hmm. And there weren't really easy options or opportunities to, you know, locate the right. restaurants or what's popping or any of those things. Mm -hmm. So I created Hello Africa as a way for Africans and diaspora to meet each other to connect for dating, mm -hmm. whether it's um, also social networking, oh. employment networking, okay. and also to promote and advertise events and um, opportunities like that. All in one. All in one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so we've got HelloFresh. HelloFresh is the Oh my God, service. girl, I'm hungry. I told you I was you did hungry. Say you're hungry. <laughs> Hello Africa, excuse me. Should we I add a component of food to the Hello Africa? Yes, that <laughs> yes, please. I'm starving. So we've got uh, Hello Africa. Yes. And then what? What else? Bido. Bido, what's that? That is my sparkling wine Ooh. company. I told you I love bubbles, girl. Yes. I do. Okay, I want some of that too. I got you. Okay. I got you. So sparkling wine. Because I just I love champagne. I love sparkling wine. I like the finer things in life. Mm -hmm. And I, I just want to give people that type of product. Mm. And who better to decide the finer things in life than someone who's tasted so many fine things? Oh, that's a bitch <laughs> right there. <laughs> Yes. Two, there's two levels of it, you know. Yeah. I also know that things can be expensive, so I'm doing like a sparkling wine that's gonna be more affordable for people because not everyone's okay. like on that Dom Perignon, you know, right. that Moet budget. Okay, because listen, I buy Andre, five dollars. It still tastes good. It still tastes good. Listen, so that's <laughs> I'm making high quality champagne like yes. sparkling wine for those who want great things, but want to also watch their coins. Save their coins. So I'm gonna have some really big news on that in the next couple of weeks. Okay. That was featured um, a little bit in one of the episodes where I kind of put the idea out there about my Bido line. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was my unpacking party mm -hmm. that I talked about it and all the girls got to taste it. Yes. Um, but we're near completion. We're still in production, yeah. but near completion. And I'll have some updates You should have brought some. We could have sipped it and chit-chatted. it's by God's grace I even made it here. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, but that needs to be your, your tagline for for next season. If, if you know in the event you return, which I heard you are returning. From but. you saw some billboard, right? Or something you saw some poster? Yeah, it was like a it looked like an official Housewives poster. Did it come from Bravo? Well, no, but <laughs> <laughs> you're so silly. You're so silly. Um, next time I see you, I got you. Yes. And we'll work on your subscription with Hello Africa, <laughs> and then I will check in with you for taglines. Yes. No. That. What. What. What did you just say? So the the finer, who better than the finer? I forgot what it was, but it was good. Run it back and let me know too. Run it back. <laughs> and who better to decide the finer things in life than someone who's tasted so many fine things? We gotta go. Okay, so let us know anything else you're working on. What do you want to let the people know that they don't know about you? Anything else to clear the space, to oh. add to the space? This is your moment. Oh, goodness. Um, let me think for a second because I didn't really prepare for a monologue. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, see, I'm ridiculous. People don't understand that I'm actually like, yeah. I am a very chill person. Right, like, right. I don't have stress, I don't have too many problems. Uh -huh. I'm just laid back and chill, and I like to have a good time. Mm -hmm. And I am someone who does it all and that's yeah. kind of like what I've um based my nonprofit. I have a nonprofit okay. called Life of Lux because I really am interested Life interested of in Lux. Yes, yes. Girl, Life of, everything about me is just Yeah, Lux. you you just love the things. <laughs> <laughs> so my nonprofit is about children and okay. like how can they have and aspire for a life of lux. So it's about motivating them to work hard, whether it's education mm -hmm. or whether they have, you know, athletic abilities or um, creative singers or actors work hard mm -hmm. to provide a life of lux for yourself. Mm. So it's motivating them about options that. and opportunities in life and encouraging them also from people with, you know, unfortunate backgrounds and how to keep them motivated. And um, you guys will be learning more about that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, life of, yeah. lux. life of lux. Hello Africa. I yes. keep almost saying hello fresh. No, hello Google. Africa. <laughs> um, and we've got Beto, mm -hmm. Beto, and we've got a whole lawyer. Wow. Uh, a whole lawyer, seasoned attorney. Wow. And a new wife. A new soon wife. Soon to be mother. Put it into, put it into the air. And I'm redecorating my entire house. Yes. Getting acclimated into Potomac. I feel like they're like, did we mean to let this girl in the neighborhood? Because <laughs> she's out here and she's just running rampant and turning Potomac upside down. Yeah. But it's been great. I really love the community. Um, I really do like the aspect of, you know, having some diversity, not too much, unfortunately, in Potomac. Mm -hmm. But I love seeing, you know, brown skinned people and representation really does matter. Mm -hmm. So I like knowing that um, there's other brown skinned people in my community for when I do have kids that they can see, you know, yeah. to aspire to continue to live this type of life. I love that. Love that for you. Well, thank you so much, Neka, for joining oh. us today and being so open. Um, Was and that honest. too open? Because no. sometimes I don't know when to stop talking. I feel like you were perfectly open, perfectly <laughs> fine. And now we all want a life of lux, honey. Yeah, yes. the finer things because we all tasted finer <laughs> things. Something like that. But thank you so much, Neka, for oh. stepping into the shade room. Thanks for having me and not being yes. too shady. Just, just the right amount. Just, just the right amount. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, roommates. If you want to see more celebs stepping into the shade room, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here.